Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about uh, section 2.5, um, and we'll mainly discuss autonomous equations um, and uh, then modeling population dynamics using these types of equations. So here's our uh, general first order autonomous differential equation. It's autonomous because f of y does not depend on the independent variable. So here are sort of some examples of autonomous. We have y prime is equal to cosine of y. Notice then the right-hand side only depends on y. You don't see time uh, or space or t or x explicitly. Here's another example, y squared minus 1. Okay. Here are some non-autonomous equations. For example, y prime is equal to um, e to the y plus t, because t here is the independent the independent variable. Uh, y prime is equal to t cubed is another example. So again, these are non-autonomous and these are autonomous. Okay, uh, one of the nice things that we can uh, do with autonomous equation is that we can actually gain, get some information about um, how the solutions behave. And the first thing that we wanna do is to try to understand what the equilibrium solutions um, are. And these are solutions which, which satisfy y prime is equal to zero, right? So again, if we have y prime is equal to f of y, I'm just really looking for the zeros of y. Right, so um, equilibrium solutions. Our zeros are of my function f. Okay, they're really the same thing. So in our examples, uh, I had y prime is equal to cosine of y. All I have to do is I have to look for the values of y that make cosine equal to zero, right? And in this case, it's going to be, um, so I have cosine of y equal to zero implies that y is plus or minus pi over two, plus or minus three pi over two, plus or minus five pi over two, uh, so on and so forth. Okay, so these are going to be all of the equilibrium solutions of these, the differential equation y prime is equal to cosine of y. Um, what about the other example, y prime is equal to y squared minus 1? Well, this one I can rewrite it in the following form, and I can see that... Um, y squared minus 1 equal to 0 implies that y has to be plus or minus 1. So these are the equilibrium solutions. Okay, so just a few examples. Okay, um, so autonomous equations um, are used uh, to model population dynamics, which is actually um, also what we used for the compounding interest equation. So um, sort of the most basic model for population growth was introduced uh, in 1978. And essentially, it assumes that the growth of the population is proportional to the population itself. Okay, So if p of t is a population of time t and r is the rate of growth, then the appropriate model um, is just p prime of t is e to the rp. You can see it's very similar to the compounding interest. Okay, so um, so if the initial population is p zero, okay, we know how to solve this. We in fact know that p of t is going to be p of zero, the initial population times e to the r t. Okay, so that's the solution. Which if I plot p of t. Uh, let's say this is p0, 
I'm going to be growing exponentially, which is not very realistic. Right, it's not realistic because, in fact, we have uh, limited resources, right? So a more realistic model would be the model for uh, logistic growth, which really makes the modification that the growth rate uh, now is a function of the population itself. So I'm going to replace R with H of P. So instead of having dp dt is equal to rp, I'm replacing this with dp dt is equal to some function of h of p times p, okay? And the question is, what is this h of p? Well, I want the following conditions to be satisfied. Okay, so let k be the carrying capacity. Right, the modifications that I want, well, I want h of p to be approximately r uh, when p is small, right? So I don't want to change it. If, if the population is small, it should be similar to the uh, initial model. But if um, beyond the carrying capacity, right, this is essentially k is um, how much resources we have, right? So if we run out of resources, if, if P is beyond this carrying capacity, I want my population to decrease, okay? So a good example for H of P is, well, I can take my rate and I'm going to modify it by 1 minus P over K, okay? So then I end up with the model with P prime is equal to R 1 minus P over K, times p, okay? And this is my function of p. So this is the logistic growth model. So let's find the equilibrium solutions of my um, ODE. Remember that f of p was given by this guy, and I want to set that equal to zero. So in this case, um, The only equilibrium solution is going to be when p is equal to 0 or p is equal to k, right? These are the only zeros of f of p. And so we can actually graph this guy. We can graph p, uh, and this is as a function of p. And so we're going to have a 0 here. We're going to have a 0 at k. And essentially, this is going to be positive if I'm between these two guys, but negative otherwise, okay? So this guy is actually going to give us quite a bit of information. Here I've redrawn it again, and I'm reminding you that this is the uh, differential equation that we have, and notice that the sine of f tells you whether p is increasing or decreasing. If it's positive, the derivative is positive, and so the population is growing. If it's negative, the population, the derivative is negative, and so the population is decreasing. So one good thing to do is to plot, again, p versus f of p, what I have here, and determine when it's positive and when it's negative, right? So if it's positive, um, it's, it's going to be positive between 0 and k, and I'm going to... Um, put arrows to the right to denote that p is growing, right? On the other hand, if p is higher than k, f is negative, and so p prime is negative, and so I'm moving to the left. Um, okay, if p happens to be negative, physically that doesn't make sense, but in any case, I've, if I'm over here, I'm going to be moving to the left. So you can put this summarize this information is in what's known as the face line, um, where you basically just draw the y-axis, right? And you put your equilibrium solutions, 0 and k. And if p is less than 0, you're decreasing. You're getting less and less negative. Forget about that physically. That doesn't make sense. Um, if it, were if it were money, it would certainly make sense. Um, if you're between 0 and k, y is increasing, so we're moving up. 
And if k, if y is bigger than k, then we're decreasing. Okay. So this is the phase line, and it gives us information that if our initial condition happens to live in this area, my solution is somehow going to move to k, right? And if it lives here, it's going to move to k, right? So somehow in this area, if I start in that area, I'm converging to k. If I start negative, I'm converging to minus infinity. Okay, so the information we gathered earlier can help us actually uh, plot the function of p with respect to t. Um, so actually this is p of t, not y of t. Um, just by at least qualitatively, right? So we know for a fact that if p is initially zero, it's gonna remain zero because it's an equilibrium solution and p is equal to k is another solution. Now here, if this guy is positive, I know that p prime is increasing. If it's negative, it's decreasing, right? So, so from the phase line, I know that in this region right here, I'm increasing, and in this region here, I'm decreasing, okay? I'm not gonna worry about what happens when p initially is negative. Okay, so, but we can actually gather more information on how the solution increases to k um, in, in, in the following way. You can notice that uh, from this function here, I see that the derivative at zero is zero, and then it gets positive, and it gets bigger, 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 until it reaches this maximum value, which I call p star, and then it's still positive, but it's decreasing as I approach k, right? So here, there's really going to be a change in concavity, okay? And I need to figure out when that's going to happen, right? Uh, and so to find this point, all I have to do is take the derivative. So let me erase. Um, Take the derivative, f prime of p is 1 minus 2 p over k. And so solving for f prime of p is equal to 0, that's p star, gives me um, 2 p star over k is equal to uh, 1. And so I know that p star is k over 2, okay? Um, and so as really at k over 2, I'm going to have a change in concavity. And so you know that initially here, your derivative is going to be I'm, I'm to the left, right, on below k over 2. So my derivative is going to be potentially um, small down here. It's going to increase, it's going to increase, it's going to increase. Here it's going to change concavity and eventually approach k over 2. Um, and if you are above, if you're over here, you're not changing concavity, right? So essentially you're just going to come straight down. So you can actually even get information about really in detail how the solution is approaching um, K. So this, is, this concludes this video, um, and in class we'll actually solve this uh, explicitly and see how we actually get um, these solutions.